Um, all you have to know for exam purposes is the outline but it's going to make no sense so mm. that's why we've given you all the information people you need to know the four eras okay you must know the Cambrian period in detail which we are going to do with you and you need to know when each of the mass extinctions occurred that's it you don't have to know everything else that's in between yes. Otherwise, I promise you now it's going to take you a year just to learn this yes. because it's an extensive section of work. Um, it's a very specialized field as well. We don't expect you to know that. Just the four errors within this, this, the, 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 this table that we've given you, what the four errors are. You need to know the Cambrian period in detail, which we're going to do now, and you need to know when each extinction occurred. That's it. All right. Nothing else. Anything extra is is for your interest i think farida let's go through the cambrian period with the learners yes. okay now we look at the cambrian period is known as the origin of all early life forms and especially of all animal groups now geologists have found all present day animal phyla and now you know what the phyla is except the core dates in marine sediments and rock formations of this era okay now you must just just a reminder here that this fell in the paleozoic um, era and we then get the Cambrian period so uh, the Cambrian period shows animal forms had reached a degree of adaptability and they allowed them to survive by adapting to the changes in the environment and this was very important so we've now gone from cold-blooded to warm-blooded organisms um, because they can control their body temperatures geologists have recorded that gradual flooding of the continents took place during this era reaching a maximum period during the Ordovician period, further proving the continental drift theory, because that's one of the theories that we are going to be mm. looking at in detail, um, is the continental drift theory. But this, this almost lends itself to proving that the continental drift actually did occur. Um, so that is why the Cambrian period is incredibly important. It is known as the origin of all early life forms. Now, during this, this Cambrian period, there was a very strange sort of <laughs> bird-like structure. Another word from definitely <laughs> hell. You've got to see this word. Look at it. Archaeopteryx. <laughs> uh, how somebody can say that fast, I do not know. <laughs> but it's Archaeopteryx. Yes. Come, come, okay. Rita, give so me your Archaeopteryx. version. Archaeopteryx. Archaeopteryx. There we go. Right. Just know that you can spell it, people. But <laughs> this animal really is from the Jurassic period. Now fossils show it was about the size of the modern day crow. It had feeble wings, a jawbone lined with teeth, and a long reptile tail covered with feathers. Now that's very interesting. No, no, no. This right? thing didn't know whether it was a bird yes. or a reptile. I mean, honestly, look at it. Because it, it had a tail with feathers, and then it had wings uh, which was feeble. And it had a jaw lined with teeth. Yes. I, I don't know. If, I mean, you, you, no you, bird at that. But you actually say as scarce as chicken teeth because chickens <laughs> do not have teeth. Birds don't have teeth. They don't. They've got beaks. Yes. Okay, so, so it belonged to a very rare group of reptiles, definitely, and is the ancestor of two branches. That is, one for reptiles, and one for birds, because the tail and the jawbone is the the reptile. Then the feathers tells us it's coming from the birds. Yeah. Okay, let's look at the continental drift now. That this refers to where all organisms are adapted to survival within the environment. Remember, they're adapted to the environment. They interact with the biotic and abiotic factors within their habitat, and that we did in the first strand with you. Plant and animal species are discontinuously distributed across the world. They are found in specific habitats that are similar located all over the world. Now I think, that, let's mm. just go to that discontinuously Continuous. distributed. People, discontinuous means that it, it, it doesn't continue. Mm. So in other words, if we, what we're trying to say there, and what, what I think that the term is explaining, is that if we find um, animals, a certain species of plant or animal in South Africa, it doesn't mean that it's going to be found throughout mm. Africa or the whole continent of Africa and then flow on into Europe. Not at all. It is discontinuously so. If there's a climatic region in South Africa that is similar to a climatic region in Europe somewhere, maybe in Italy, yes. and, and another one in, in so Spain or Portugal or Germany, 
and it's the same climatic sort of region, type of climate, we will find the same organism spaced there. So it is discontinuously spaced, depending on the climate and, and, and the organisms that are found there. Right. Thanks, Kathy. You can see it's explained clearly to you what's meant by discontinuously distributed. So we say discontinuous distribution is based on the concept of organisms originating in one area and then dispersing outwards, as we stated, depending on that climate being the same as where they were originated. Okay. Fossil evidence now shows that species are distributed differently today to long ago. And remember we said they've got their scientific method of showing this and proving that they are different. Yeah. So they don't just state it, but they can show us scientifically how different they are. From, from fossils? Yes. It's all from fossils. The same type of organism is located on different content, continents. Example, the three remaining species of lungfish that are found in the tropical areas of South America, that's Lepidocerin, then you get Africa with Protopterus, and you get Australia with Neocaratodus. So these are now your three species of lungfish found in these particular areas. And people, you don't need to know those different yes. types of species. You just got to know that, as an example, lungfish are found in three different on three different continents. Um, you know, or at three different yes. continents. That that's all it is. It's an it's an example. Your teachers may give you ten other yes. examples, and they may ask you to go and research examples. It's just so that if they do give you a question like this in an exam, you've got grounding, you've got background knowledge. All right. If we look in Australia and New Zealand, um, the, the animals and the plants there have have a very are, are very specific to their regions only. Now, this is a bit different mm. because were they separate continents and not part of the continental drift um, or did they break off first? So you see, here, here we go to this whole continental shift thing here because if you look at us and, and if we look at the Prometheum, Australia, you've got egg-laying mammals, those are your monotremes, and you've also got your pouched mammals, um, your marsupials, that's your kangaroos, okay? They're not found anywhere else in this world. They are only special and specific to Australia. Now, during the Mesozoic uh, um, era, Australia was isolated from the other continents. So the primitive mammals did not have competition from the later evolving placental mammals. And that is why they are still around today. In 1912, Alfred Wegener proposed that the shapes of the continents fitted together like a puzzle into one big supercontinent, which he named Pangaea. Now, you must know the supercontinent's name was Pangaea. And Pangaea broke up into pieces approximately 180 million years ago in a process called the continental drift. Now, Wegener's theory was not accepted because he could not explain what caused this continental drift. Now you must remember the scientists those days didn't have the technology mm. that we have yes. today. I mean that's what we've said earlier is how amazing these people must have been because they stuck to their guns. Boy, they mm. made their theory and they based it on proof that they'd found to the best of their ability. But they also knew that the people couldn't really disprove it because they had no way of disproving it other than to just argue about it. Oh, oh, oh.